everyone and welcome to Festival for Change. My name is Kaisa and I am a university student at Winterheim Honors College. Today's talk is going to be very exciting, so please put your questions in the chat. Kaisa and I am a university student at Winterheim College. Today's talk is. I am honored uh, to have here today with me Barry James, who is a serial entrepreneur and has been an occasional activist for over three decades, deeply committed to social justice. After a long career at the forefront of technology, from health tech and the N NS NHS to more recently fintech, blockchain, and frontier tech. He has recently committed himself to equipping change makers to identify and tackle the common root of the climate emergency and a runaway inequality for the sake of humanity and the generations to come. It is to this end he has recently founded the dignitydonut.org and last year hashtag humane economics. Building on insights he has developed based on the psychology he first learned as a student of Lancaster University and experience of the mechanics and parliament and government, as well as business. The Unseen Gorilla is his new blog and our starting point today. Kesa, um, thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you to everyone who's, uh, Henry and everyone who's um, uh, helped put this together and uh, and uh, particularly everyone who's, who's uh, here today. Um, thank you very much. The first thing I want to want to say is that Greta Thunberg is right. She's exactly right. Uh, she's right not to buy into the blog and she's right to say that the wake up call has not worked and I'm afraid it will not work as things stand at the moment certainly because the corporate world and world leaders don't see things as we're seeing them. They don't see things actually as they are and certainly not as Greta does. There's a, there's a reason for this, and it goes deep. It goes very deep, because unlike the psychological uh, uh, concept of, it's, well, it's not unlike the psychological con con concept of framing, I should say, uh, yeah. but and the bias that goes by that, but it, 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 it is deep. It's at a cultural level. Um, but uh, they remain in no doubt that business as usual is top priority. She's right about that, and uh, and we'll do what we and have a do what we can mentality. When they should, of course, be safeguarding the future of humanity and of the planet, uh, and putting that first. This is why it's vitally important that we shift thinking. Uh, from business as usual to the future of humanity, of humanity. Uh, and for that we must first shift our own thinking. And this is the basis of um, what Kaiser re referred to just now. It, it, it's uh, this. This is what humane economics is was about. It's about understanding the roots of the crisis we're in, not just the branches. Um, uh, and and working out what, what it is that we can do about it. Can we fix this? And we can, but first we need to shift our own thinking, our own framing. Uh, we need to find a way to escape the, the framing that we have. And then we can uh, ensure that our leaders and our institutions do too. It's not gonna be easy. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a big project, but it is, it is possible, uh, but the big question is how? How can we unblock change? Uh, how can we make this happen? Because this monoculture, which I heard referred to before quite rightly, uh, uh, of financialization is dangerously simplistic. It's what has got us where we are, and it's still in place. That's why we're talking about business as usual at COP26. And, and, and all of the things that Greta rightly said. Um, and if you listen, just listen with the, the, this in mind to the news, to the governments and institutions and what they say, they tell us all the time that if we fix the money, we'll fix the problem. And the money 
and our attitude to it and the financialization of everything and every decision is the problem. So while ever we have this mindset, we can't fix the problem. And this is the monomania that frames all of decision making. This is financialized thinking. And as I say, it's become deeply a part of our, our culture and, uh, and the way we see the world. So as I've mentioned, how, how we got here, uh, we studied this with humane economics and we, we discovered that there was a big sea change um, and it was, it was brought about deliberately um, and it was via economics, but economics presented as a science which it, it it still can't aspire to be it isn't it's uh and 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 the 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 uh the freedman doctrine which began this in the public sphere in from 1970 on on one was called a doctrine for a reason because it's a belief system uh, and a false belief system of that and a, a false belief system of life and that was just the beginning so, uh, but it was part of a, a, um, a systematic uh, attempt to change the way we think and to change culture. And it was incredibly powerful and successful in doing that. Uh, and we need to roll it back in order to fix the problem because we need to get to the root. So it was financialized economic stress to science and complete, by the way, with a fake Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize is not um a, a nobel prize it is bought and paid for and it's driven this thinking this framing this way of seeing the world deep into our business culture into corporate business uh into academia and then on into the heart of governance and politics and this happened with the help of uh thatcher and reagan um both of whom uh, in fact, Margaret Thatcher was 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 deeply committed to to the philosophy of Hayek. Uh, she actually, at her first uh, meeting of the uh, shadow cabinet, dropped him one of his books on the desk, thump, and said, "Gentlemen, this is what we believe. This is what we believe," and that's a really important statement. So it's how we've come to see the world, and it's become the means of decision making. You hear this all the time, all the decisions we hear made in government, in public life, as well as in business, are all based on budgets and, 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 and financialization. Uh, and it was not always so. I've lived long enough to remember before this, uh, before the, uh, the 1980s and the 1970s, when we were told that there's no alternative. And that was always a lie. But we took it to heart. And financialized thinking has spread and metastasized like a cancer. And it's now infected all decision making. This is why we can't see beyond financialization. This is why we can't make the right decisions to escape, to escape uh, and fix the things that we need to fix for the climate emergency. So how can we escape this toxic ideology that's now everywhere? Well, this is what we've been working on. Um, first, we need another place to stand, uh, another place to, uh, uh, to allow us to shine the light of transparency uh, on decision making and on uh, the, you know, the, the philosophy that we all uh, are obliged to live by in our work lives uh, and as consumers to restore decency, but via dignity and respect for people and the planet so that we can be more than just consumers and workers uh, and the planet can be more than just a source uh, for resources to be plundered and we need the framework uh, a framework to do this is what what the what uh, the dignity donut is for which contains the primary colors of humanity which are fairness balance and justice uh, which all need to be to go they're transcendent because um they are at the basis of every religion uh they're at the basis of every uh culture um and it's only in the last 50 years that we've allowed those to be challenged as principles um 
So we're going to bring these things together and we're going to, we need, a, we, we need you guys, we need change makers, we need a rebel army uh, of, of rebel leaders able to see through this stuff and, and to challenge it at every level. Uh, so what we've done with the Dignity Donors is based this not on religion, we're not going backwards, we're going forwards. We now have the science that enables us to set, understand mankind as a social creature and the absolute imperative from our DNA outwards of those values. Uh, so, you know, this isn't a call backwards, it's a call forwards to, to, to a better future. Um, and this is we, what we want to do is to empower change makers with this framework and with the knowledge of how to go about this and how to make these challenges. So, uh, and they, enabling us as a, as a society to say, it's not okay. It's not okay to keep on wrecking the planet, and we are. It's not okay to exploit people and disregard their dignity as human beings. It's not okay. It's not okay for the strong to predate on the weak. It never was. And we must now take permission away from uh, for people to do that. Finally, uh, we... we need to and will shine a light on our predatory corporate culture that spread into public life and politics and in all our institutions to help us move beyond this monomania um, so that we can survive and protect humanity democracy and our planet this is a huge ask and a huge responsibility but it's the legacy of the last 50 years or so and counting but first, we need to see and understand, and then we can deal with these roots. Thank you. Thank you, Barry, for this really thought-provoking um, discussion. Um, maybe taking a little bit of a step back, I was wondering whether this um, cho chosen blindness is more of a like a biological trait that we as humans have, or is it taught to us? Uh, at schools or by society? Yeah, it's a great question. And the answer is actually on two levels. It's both really. So uh, our biological systems, you know, we, we kind of see the world and we think we see it complete. Actually what's going on, uh, and this is clearly understood in psychology and in neuroscience is where it's a bit like LIDAR. We're taking data points and we're reconstructing a model in our head. And actually it's not that solid. Uh, as, as, as our consciousness makes it, it seem to be. Uh, so that, that system uses lots of shortcuts in order to build that model. And therefore, what we see isn't the reality. What we see is the representation of the reality, which has uh, weak points. So uh, in order for it to work at all, it has to have working assumptions. And if those working assumptions go out of date, well, we can't see what's really there and those working assumptions have gone out of date. But that's on the biological level. On the cultural level, it's very much parallel. Um, and uh, uh, there's, there's, there's great science now that helps us to understand that we as human beings are a product both of our, uh, our biology, but also our culture. We co-evolve with our culture. And our culture has the same problems. It has built in. Uh, assumptions and this is why over the last 10 20 30 years we're having to reassess our attitudes uh to to many things such as homosexuality and lgbt and and colonialism and, and, and all of these things built on we want we, we we now get that some of those assumptions are wrong well you know it's at both levels Kaiser, does that make sense yeah, yeah, no, it does make a lot of sense that um, there's more than one player and it's not like an either or situation and that there is hope for, for humans. I also see that we have a first question in the chat. Um, Amelia asks, uh, thank you, Barry. You said that dignity and other values sh should be restored. Could you give us any ex uh, specific examples on how to get this done into your, into your society? That's a great question, um, and it's not easy. Um, uh, this is the first thing that we need, uh, I realised when um, I presented the, the, the first research from the Human Economics Project to 
our community, please come and join us, by the way, um, was uh, was that, you know, how, how can we, you know, we, we see what's happened, how can we fix it? And we've spent nearly a year now working on that. Um, and what we're going to be doing is, is providing tools. Now, part of my history as an activist is I came up with, uh, I saw a problem with the way the financial system works uh, and the way it works with innovation and came up with a, a, a strategy to change that from the outside. I wasn't part of the regulator, but I changed the way the regulator worked in the UK uh, with an idea and a campaign. Uh, and that's gone around the world. And I want to equip other people to do that. And D Donna Hicks, Dr. Donna Hicks, has written a book. It's uh, the the next edition is is, is coming out um, about now. Uh, and and there's some great uh, insights and tools there. There's a number of books. Uh, the Dignity Donut uh, also mm -hmm. references, you know, Donut Economics as well, which most people probably here are already aware of. But there's there's a number of tools that we're bringing together. So, uh, but but this is about restoring the attitude within our institutions and within uh, the leaders. We actually live dual lives. If you, I'm sure you've noticed this, that that the the alley cat corporate predatory attitudes that we're we're forced into um, the that frame in our working lives. You wouldn't dream of treating our friends and family that way. Um, so we, we need a mechanism to bring that sanity um, uh, and bring it to bear on the insanity. I'm sorry I can't be, you know, laser specific at this point. And, uh, but, but you know, it, it's going to be about changing the culture of our institutions pr principally. Yeah, thank you, Amelia, for the question. Um, Nicolette is uh, asking, how can practi practically can we stand elsewhere and challenge the institutionally entrenched destructive values and financi financialization, and especially when day to day we live and depend on these cultures? Wow, great, great question, uh, Nicolette. Thank you for that. Um, it's been incredibly difficult, hasn't it? And it still is incredibly difficult because uh, I, I noticed actually a little bit of a sea change about a couple of years ago when someone used the word decency in a debate for the first time in many years. So something something's happening. We want we want this to happen. Uh, but but, you know, we, we've we've lived in a world where, you know, people flaunting the predatory behavior has been not just acceptable, but lionized. And we've we've, we've got to change that. How do we change it? This is why we've created the Dignity Donut, right? With these primary colors of humanity backed by the science. You know, they are transcendent values. They've always been transcendent values, but, but we've not had, you know, and we need a framework where we can say, actually, this is not okay because it's because fairness matters and justice matters and balance matters. And, you know, to help us pin. Them. And, and my hope is, uh, we're, we're, you're all invited, by the way. We're, we're going to be unveiling properly the Dignity Donut for the first time on Friday. Um, if you come to uh, the, the link, uh, the, the unseengorilla.com, uh, we'll make sure you, you, you've got an invite there. But we're going to be unveiling this. And our hope is that we can offer this to the world in parallel with Donuts Economics, which uh, addresses the one side of this this is this is a, a mirror image in parallel in enabling everyone to, to be totally justified in talking about these things and 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 and, and resetting uh, those elements of our culture no that's that's a really good um good answer um i was wondering because you slightly also touched upon corruption and the corruption in human nature um, hasn't every society had problems with corruption and human nature before? Yes, it has, and it always, I suppose, well, you can't change human nature and temptation is, is part of being human. Um, but the difference is that um, these transcendent values that have gone through, through all of history um, are, are aspirational in the sense that, that that's what is expected of us. 
and it's only really it it's only in the last 50 years since this uh, economic thinking has put efficiency with a particular definition of efficiency higher value than fairness and justice and balance uh, and that that's that's the great innovation of neoliberal um, uh, economics and that's got us where we are so this isn't to say that i'm perfect or you should be perfect or you can be perfect it's to say that as throughout history we we we, we have agreed rules even, even even if they're broken sometimes uh, uh the difference is that when you break those rules uh there should be you know acknowledgement of that not um not not lionization of you for breaking those rules yeah that's that's really good uh interesting uh, point of view uh i see nicolette has another perhaps a follow-up question can you explain what you mean by human values being backed by the science for it seems to me that every science has underlying values yeah um I mean, let me first say what I mean by science. Um, uh, and 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 there, there there are some areas of social science which have underlying values, but the Earth goes around the sun. We're in no doubt of that. We've checked it many times. So, you know, science is uh, is more than a, a collection of opinions or values. And what what I mean by the science here, though is well i'll reference um a book by nicholas christ uh, uh Chris, christoph who uh, is at yale university who's done a brilliant job of bringing together a book called blueprints of bringing together the science around um uh, around the, the the humanity and and we, we all know now that, that the higher apes have a sense with us of fairness if you if you, there's plenty of experiments where you can actually see the the, the reaction to injustice in, uh, in the experiment but he's brought together so much more uh, and and made the case uh, irrefutably in my view uh, that social values of fairness uh, 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 and and on from there uh, are uh, you know a part of our dna and a part of our um uh, uh, you know uh, what it means to be human uh we're not stronger than the strongest out there we're not um uh, we, we are smarter but part of that smartness is the ability to act together and to be social and the foundation of that is actually there's a really interesting acid test so if you ask anyone is it okay to treat you unfairly you can imagine the reaction can't you so fairness is a transcendent human value uh and and as i say uh i i, I uh the, the book blueprint is is well worth looking at from that point of view yeah thank you thank you nicolette for uh having the question uh i see uh subarna currently all of us are demanding to be highly competitive and ruthless could you share if and how you were able to accommodate the social expectations and your values together? Um, really, by rejecting the demand to be ruthless. Competitive and ruthless are different things. Um, and uh, again, um, what nature teaches us, actually, we've been focusing in on uh, because of certain memes and so on, which are a misunderstanding of evolution, actually, evolutionary science. We're focused in on uh, the, the memes such as the survival of the, of the fittest and think in terms of, you know, bloody conflict and, and uh, um, uh, small animals eating uh, even smaller animals and so on. Um, but actually, if you zoom out, a whole ecosystem is about cooperation. So, so nature is in balance on this in having the overriding theme is the cooperation of the different parts of the ecosystem. It's, it's only just looking at a part when, when you actually take that very skewed view. It's actually not what Darwin intended. Uh, it was a, it, it's a skew on it. Um, so, so fundamentally, it's, it's, for me, it's 
you know, uh, ruthlessness is 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 uh, an excess. It's predatory, and it's not part of uh, what we you know what we should be uh, lionizing and, uh, and and basing our thinking on. Um, there's place. There's certainly place for competition, but um, we need balance. Yeah, thank you, Subarna, for for this uh, question. Um, I'm wondering, uh, because before you were also talking about the framing and kind of the, yeah, how we frame the financialization and everything, but uh, how can we make sure that our leaders are not wearing, you know, the, the are, you know, seeing the gorilla? How can we make sure of that? Well, we, we have to do it by uh, a, a whole process. And we have to have some strategy behind this, much as I was talking about before, where we um, actually um, there was a famous American judge, uh, Louis Brandeis, who said that sunlight and fresh air um, are the best disinfectant, uh, and 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 you know that's the starting point. It's if you let if you use transparency uh, 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 and 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 put the lens that we're helping to create with a donut, but are based on transcendent values uh, there and insist upon it, then it's in impossible to resist. And, and one of the things that we're going to be doing with the Rebel Leaders Workshops, which follow on from the donut, is we're going to be helping people and equipping them with tools to do that, to be able to challenge uh, institutions using that framework and to challenge uh, where the, you know uh, financialized thinking is damaging people and ultimately damaging the planet as well. Yeah, no, th thank you for, for that uh, really valuable um, insights. I see we have four minutes left and I was wondering, uh, is there anything you want to leave us with, like a positive insight because we've been covering uh, topics like corruption and um, ruthless ruthlessness and competitiveness, but I do believe that hope is something that drives us forward. So maybe like uh, nice closing words from your side. Of course. I mean, clearly, you know, we are in a climate emergency and and and, and part of the, uh, the picture here is, is that we have to look at these things and we have to be, um, we have to have laser uh, uh, insights uh, to find the root and to deal with it. The good news is, this can be done. Okay, so one of the things that um, I've discovered both through my my own work, uh, but also in, in the research of humane economics and, uh, and seeing how this corrupt value system was foisted upon us all, is that, that was a deliberate action from a group, a relatively small group of people who were able to do that uh, over, over a period of time. Uh, and we broke this and we can fix it. So my message of hope here is, uh, you know, there, the, the, there is a, um, a place to stand. We have these transcendent values. We need to, 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 to refresh uh, and, and, and to learn to stand, stand on them. But doing that and doing it together, um, we can, uh, we, we actually can do this and we can reclaim uh, the reclaimed society uh, as something for us all, rather than uh, uh, us all in, in um, uh, harnessed to the few. Have we lost Kaiser? Um, I think we might have done. Ah, here she is. We lost you for a moment there. Uh, you, you, you may have missed the end of the 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 the, the point on hope. And, but the point of hope is this, we can do it. It's not simple, it's not easy, but it can be done. Um, I, 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 the, uh, I'll leave you with this thought. Um, I think it was Margaret Mead, the great anthropologist, who said, never doubt that a small group of committed people, committed, passionate people, can change the world because nothing else ever has. Yes. Thank you so much, Barry, for the uh, wise words. And uh, thank you so much also for the audience.
who is uh, more interested to have um, further insights, go visit theunseengorilla.com. And there you can also find the Dignity Donut and the Rebel Leaders Workshop. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for being here and uh, uh, have a good day. Yeah, and come and join us in the Humane Economics community. You'll find that there as well, but uh, hopefully see, see folks there. Thank you, Kaisa. Thank you. Bye.